know, this is my office, and for 26 years, people on Whitby have come to talk about life issues, relationships, losses, work stress, and major decisions. And I promise I am not going to share a word that <laughs> I've ever talked about in my office. I'm actually going to talk about me today. No matter what we've talked about in my office, I've come to learn over 26 years that it often comes down to, at some point, boundaries, our personal boundaries. Now, therapy school, when I was training, way back when the dinosaur era, they had lots of fancy words for these boundaries, none of which I've ever used since therapy school. <laughs> And I learned that most people are really sorting out a conflict inside themselves. And therapy is very helpful with sorting out inner conflict. And I've come up with a way to describe this inner conflict. And it's about our relationship to yes and no. I once had a client ask me, what are boundaries made of? And I thought that was just a brilliant question. And that's what I focus my talk on here today. Boundaries are made of yeses and nos. I've learned that there are three things about yes and no. They guide us through every single life decision. They guide us through every single relationship. And it goes for our entire lives. So yes and no sounds like that's kind of a very simple thing, right? Yes, no, everybody understands what that is. But to show you just how complicated this whole thing is, I'll share some stories of my own personal journey with yes and no. My very first surprise no came in my 20s. That's a drawing of the fairy in Whitby Island. That's the best I could do. I don't understand what the heck you're looking at on the screen. They said bring pictures, so I should do that. <laughs> Anyway, back to my surprise note. I was up here visiting a place I never heard of, Muffle, whatever, and I got on the ferry and I was coming to this place, Whitby Island, and I was coming for lunch 26 years ago. <laughs> and the ferry boat was like crossing the water, the same 15 minutes that it takes nowadays, and I go my 15 minutes and I get off and I rent a cabin. I quit my job. I tell my husband I'm not coming back to Los Angeles and I'm not returning to our house. In fifth, I may end up being unstable after her night. two minutes, I was crossing the ferry and this no kidnapped me and took me to Whitby Island. And I've been here ever since. So bad enough. And that's what I discovered about what happens after you say no. I was kind of in free fall. So here I was on Whitby Island. I had no plan. All of my life maps were suddenly discarded. That's what happens sometimes. Sometimes when we say no, we have to discard a lot of things that we have big plans about. And I found that in discarding my particular life maps, you go into this place called a free fall zone and you don't know what's next. And a lot of people have trouble getting to their no inside because they're really afraid of all the things that are next, that they don't have any answers to. And it's not really saying no that's as hard as the, but what about everything else? So I've been there, I know. So here I was, I was living without a plan, and Rick Prell was our beloved dentist here in town. And I moved here knowing nobody, and I went in to see Rick, my teeth were hurting, and he was drilling in my mouth, and if you had ever known Rick Prell, he'd drill it in your mouth and talk to you, and expect <laughs> you to talk back. <laughs> out of the therapist. And he said, oh, you've got to open an office here. And I was like, are you crazy? I don't know anybody here. I can't just start a practice. First of all, I wouldn't be able to pay a rent. I wouldn't be able to, you know, reconnect anybody. They don't even know who I am. And he said, no, we need you. We need a therapist here. He said, come upstairs. And he had an upstairs attic office kind of thing, about the dental office. And he said, you can use this as your office. I said, I can use this as my, I can't pay your rent. And he said, well, you, you just think about how, how's $5? 
Yeah. So, I knew something was wrong. And so that's how I began to understand that um, yeses and nos are not permanent things. They can change. And every person can have their own sort of answers for them, and you have to figure that out. And um, in one of the most beautiful places, like AA rooms and Al-Anon and NA rooms, uh, when a person discovers their no, they call that recovery. So when? <laughs> yes, and no, it's not. It's none of this was supposed to be. I'm willing to get it, because usually um, I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> uh, people are often laughing, so I'm going to space now, Peggy. I'm okay. <laughs> All right, so when our yeses and our noes get all mixed up inside of us, we get holes inside. All of us get holes. But I noticed that this yes and no confusion thing, living our life one way but really feeling differently deep inside, starts creating these holes. And in my life work, I've come to understand it as belaying, as in the verb to make secure. I attach a belay to support people to climb into their very own yes and no's. As a therapist, I don't have the answer for anybody sitting with me around what should be their yes and what should be their no. I have no idea. But I help them listen and to discover inside of them what is their real yes and no. There's nothing simple about finding our way to our real yeses and nos. But in 26 years, I've learned that our lives are very much enhanced by going on that journey and making a very secure connection to our yes and nos. And I've learned that if we don't make a secure connection, people end up with things like depression and illness and lots of pain inside. I've learned that we all love yes. You know, that would be easy. If everything was about yes and yes, I'd be really rich. Because people love yes. They love the positiveness of yes. And yes has just a good rap. But I've come to think that no is what is life-saving. And democracies, countries, and history have all been shaped by our courage as people to say no. Now, I've never seen anybody in a parenting position where they're going up to their little kids and saying, now, you know, say no like you mean it. <laughs> no, they're saying, say no, say no nicely, say no wider, say no please, say no thank you. And I really want to say to people, say no like you mean it. So take a minute with me, connect inside to your no. I know you could do the best, we're going to go to the no. Go to your no and just say no like you mean it. 